The NASCAR Cup Series playoff race at Talladega Super Speedway erupted into chaos last Sunday, with a massive 28 car pileup leaving the field in disarray and playoff hopes hanging by a thread. In the aftermath of this historic wreck, driver Denny Hamlin has stepped forward to offer a scathing critique of NASCAR's rulebook enforcement, igniting a firestorm of controversy. The Joe Gibbs racing driver and co-owner of 2311 Racing dissected the carnage on his recent podcast. The pivotal moment of the race, according to Hamlin, was an overly aggressive push on Brad Keselowski's RFK No. 6 Ford from Harrison Burton's No. 21 and Joey Logano's No. 22 Fords. It just felt like to me as someone that does this that the 21, Harrison Burton, and 22, and Joey Logano just kept pushing the 6, Brad Keselowski, and didn't get off of him, Hamlin stated. Obviously the 6 is coming to the 2, Austin Sindrick car with such a run. It just felt like to me, as, as someone that does this, that the 21 and the 22 just kept pushing the 6 and didn't get off of them. And obviously the six is coming to the two car with such a run. Hamlin pointed out that Keselowski, a former cup champion, attempted to avoid disaster by lifting off the throttle and braking slightly to slow the pack down. However, the aggressive push from behind left him with no chance to control the situation. I think Brad tweeted it, listen, I'm trying to lift. He didn't lift a lot by the way, but he did lift some and he did hit some brake to try to slow down the run. He just got shoved into a wreck, and unfortunately for those guys that kind of probably initially caused it, which is the 22 and the 21, they got bit by the actions they started, Hamlin remarked. And and I think Brad tweeted it that, you know, listen, I'm trying to lift. You know, he didn't lift a lot, by the way, but he, he did lift some and he did hit some brake to try to slow down the run, but he just got shoved into a wreck, and unfortunately for those guys that kind of probably initially caused it which is the 22 and the 12 uh and the 21 um you know they got they got bit by <laughs> by by the actions that they started so the joe gibbs racing driver didn't stop at criticizing the drivers alone he also called out the spotters of the number 21 and 22 teams hamlin emphasized that the spotters should have advised their drivers to back off and avoid pushing too hard recognizing the rapidly closing gap ahead this is on the spotters of the 21st and 22nd to say that while you're shoving the 6, yes, you got two car lengths ahead, but you have to plan that gap is going to close really quickly. You've got to get off the guy and they didn't, and it caused a wreck, Hamlin explained. You know, this is on the spotters of the 21 and 22 to say that, you know, while you're shoving the 6, yes, you know, he's two, you got two car lengths ahead, you have to plan that that gap is going to close really quickly. And so you got to get off the guy, and they didn't, and it caused a wreck. The implications of this wreck extend far beyond a single race. With only one more event left in the round of 12, the impact could be significant, potentially altering the championship landscape as drivers scramble to recover lost ground. However, Hamlin's critique of the Talladega crash was just the beginning. The veteran driver proceeded to unleash a blistering attack on NASCAR's rulebook enforcement, alleging that officials had failed to follow their own regulations during the race. Hamlin pointed to the case of race winner Ricky Stenhouse Jr., whose number 47 Chevy suffered damage to the left door during the collision, resulting in missing door foam and a hole. According to Hamlin, NASCAR officials should have ordered JTG's number 47 team to replace the foam under the red flag, but instead allowed Stenhouse to continue his run. If there was no rule, Common Sense says, he's fine, just let him go. And he won the race. The issue is the rules, they didn't follow the rules, Hamlin asserted. If there was no rule, Common Sense says, he's fine, just let him go, and he won the race. The, the issue is, is the rules. They didn't follow the rules. To bolster his argument, Hamlin's podcast co-host, Jared, read aloud from the NASCAR rulebook. Section 3337 of the Cup Series rulebook states, Energy absorbing foam blocks must be installed on the outside surface of the left and right side door, and B door foam that has been damaged or crushed must be replaced effective immediately May 4th, 2022. Section 3337 of the Cup Series rulebook states, A. Energy absorbing foam blocks must be installed on the outside surface of the left and right side door, and B. Door foam that has been damaged or crushed must be replaced, effective May 4th, 2022. Hamlin didn't stop there. 
He also pointed out that two RFK racing drivers, Brad Keselowski and Chris Buescher, were missing roof rails after the race, another apparent violation that NASCAR had not addressed. Hamlin said, There's just so many others that you don't see. I know that the six, Brad Keselowski and the 17, Chris Buescher, had their roof rails missing after the race. The four, Josh Berry, got disqualified after the race because he had bolts missing out of the windshield. The six and the 17 had their fuffing right side fins gone. There's just so many others that you don't see. I, I know that the six and the 17 had their roof rails missing after the race. Did y'all know that? I didn't. The four got DQ'd after the race because he had bolts missing out of the windshield. You're the talking six about six and the seventeen had their f right side fins gone. The controversy surrounding NASCAR's rule book enforcement comes at a particularly sensitive time for the sport. Just days before the Talladega race, Hamlin's 2311 Racing, along with Front Row Motorsports (FRM) filed an antitrust lawsuit against NASCAR accusing the governing body of monopolistic practices and anti-competitive behavior. The lawsuit alleges that NASCAR is operated like a closed-door shop, wheeling and dealing its monopoly in smoke-filled back rooms for far too long. Specifically, the 46-page legal document accuses NASCAR of unlawful monopolization of premier stock car racing by the France family in order to enrich themselves at the expense of the premier stock car racing teams that the fans come out to see and that sponsors and broadcasters value. The timing of this lawsuit, coupled with Hamlin's outspoken criticism of NASCAR's rulebook enforcement, has created a perfect storm of controversy within the sport. Some team owners, like Richard Childress, have admitted to feeling pressured to sign new charter agreements with NASCAR. We got our DocuSign that evening, 6.37, and we had to sign by 12 o'clock, or we'd lose our charters. I didn't have a choice because we had to sign. I got over 400 employees, OEM in contract, contracts with sponsors, and I gotta take care of my team," Childress revealed. Hamlin, however, is not sympathetic to this perspective, Hamlin said. You obviously saw Richard Childress, you know. He stated his opinions on it, which just drives me up the wall. Why these talking heads say, well, all these other people signed it. Because they're telling you why. Why are you ignoring them saying, I didn't want to, but I had no choice? Uh, you obviously saw Richard Childress, you know, he, he stated his um, opinions on it, which is just drives me up the wall why these talking heads say, well, all these other people signed it. Well, no, they, yeah, they did, but they're telling you why. Why are you ignoring them saying, I didn't want to, but I had no choice. The Joe Gibbs racing driver believes that the current state of NASCAR is breeding a broken system. He points to the mass exodus of major sponsors over the past decade, with the number of Fortune 500 companies involved in NASCAR dropping from 150 in 2008 to less than half that number in 2024. Recently, NASCAR lost Geico as a partner, and FedEx announced a reduction in its presence with Hamlin's number 11 team at Joe Gibbs Racing, with rumors of a permanent exit in the future. Hamlin said, We heard NASCAR say, Well, we don't want big investment companies coming into our sport. We want old drivers being car owners. They tried it and it failed for one reason or another. So when's it stop? When does it stop? We came and when we brought out facts that in 2016, there were 19 charter members. 11 of those are gone. They're gone. NASCAR say, well, we don't want big investment companies coming into our sport. We want, we want old drivers being car owners. They tried it and it failed for one reason or another. So when's it stop? When does it stop? We, we, we came and we, we brought out facts that in 2016, there were 19 charter members. Uh, 11 of those are gone. They're gone. Hamlin elaborated on the financial challenges facing teams. So anyway, we did have in the past a way or an avenue to at least use our rights. Our rights that we created, brands that we created, IP that we created, to then go get other revenue to supplement this thing called a racing team. Those got taken away. So any way that we did have in the past a way or an avenue to at least use our rights, our rights, that we created, brands that we created, 
IP that we created to then go get other revenue to supplement this, this thing called a racing team, those got taken away. The new $7.7 billion media rights deal over seven years might provide some respite to the 13 teams that have signed the new charter agreement. According to Forbes, teams could earn around $275 million per year under the new model, which is up by over 40% compared to the previous charter agreement signed in 2016. However, Hamlin argues that this increase doesn't address the fundamental issues facing the sport. Hamlin revealed that 2311 co-owner Michael Jordan was adamant about the lawsuit, but consulted with Hamlin to ensure he was willing to proceed. Given that Hamlin had more to lose than Jordan in terms of his racing career, Hamlin, who has previously attempted to invoke change in the sport, including organizing drivers years ago, told Jordan he was with him in this legal battle. While Hamlin and 2311 Racing have taken a bold stance against NASCAR, not all team owners are following suit. Brad Keselowski, co-owner of RFK Racing, stated that he wouldn't expect his team to join the lawsuit. This sentiment was echoed by Richard Childress Racing owner Richard Childress, although Childress did confirm that teams felt pressured to sign the new agreements. As the controversy continues to unfold, other drivers have weighed in on the Talladega crash and its implications. Joey Logano, a two-time cup champion, came to the defense of his former teammate Brad Keselowski, insisting that no one was to blame for the massive wreck. Hamlin's own fortunes at Talladega serve as a microcosm of the unpredictable nature of the sport. Despite starting in 8th place, Hamlin dropped to 39th by lap 4 and got caught up in Ryan Blaney's wreck on the final lap of stage 2. Hamlin said this about the turnaround, I think that the damage that we had from the Blaney incident, just it really got magnified once we got to the tail end of the pack, and then we lost the draft because we just weren't fast enough, so yeah, just, uh, it was looking grim, and then all of a sudden, you know, I had some good luck. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe to NASCAR Insider and share your thoughts in the comments below.